all the chemicals that transfer from food packaging into food are well known, right? Join me in this third episode of the Unwrapping Food Packaging video blog to find out more. My name is Jane Munke and I'm the Managing Director of the Food Packaging Forum. Today we're taking a closer look at the types of chemicals that are present in food packaging. Specifically, we'll learn about the non-intentionally added substances, also known as the NICE, and I'll also focus a little bit on what brands and retailers are doing to keep the most hazardous chemicals out of their food packaging. And I'll also touch upon why that's actually a really critical consideration for enabling the circular economy. But first, let's look at the phenomenon of migration. If you've watched the other episodes of this video blog before, you will know that chemicals can transfer from food packaging or from any other type of food contact article into food. This process is called migration. The chemicals that migrate are small molecules that are present in the packaging or maybe also outside the packaging, like printing inks or glues that stick labels on. Most chemicals migrate at individually low levels, but they migrate at the same time, meaning that a mixture of chemicals from the food packaging ends up in the food. But how do we know what chemicals are in food packaging and how do we know if these chemicals migrate into food and beverages? And maybe importantly, how do we know if these chemicals and mixtures of chemicals will harm human health? And what do we know about the environmental impacts of these food contact chemicals when packaging is littered or maybe composted? At the Food Packaging Forum, we've put together a database of chemicals that are intentionally used to make all types of food contact articles worldwide, including packaging. We've discussed this in an earlier episode and you can find a link to this database that we call the Food Contact Chemicals Database or FCCDB below. But in addition to the chemicals that are intentionally added to food contact materials and articles, there are also the non-intentionally added substances that are present in the finished food packaging, the so-called NIAS. NIAS can be impurities of the intentionally added substances as well as reaction byproducts or degradation products, for example, of additives. And there can also be contaminants that are present in the material because it has been recycled from a previous use. But importantly, not all the chemicals in plastics or in other types of food packaging like paper or cans are actually known. And for unknown chemicals, it's not possible to really quantify them. Sure, you can estimate their amounts, but there are quite some uncertainties linked to such approaches. So, how many chemicals that migrate into foodstuffs are we talking about? This is a slide from Dr. Gregor McCombie, who's a scientist, he's an analytical chemist and an enforcement officer working here in Zurich at our official food control authority. And here we see that in Europe, about 8,000 chemicals are known to be used to make all types of food content materials and articles. Some of these have been authorized by different EU member states. Some are not explicitly authorized in other EU member states. Then you see that about 1,000 substances are explicitly authorized for use in food contact across the whole EU. This means that at some time, these substances have been assessed for migration and health impacts by the EU's authorities. But it may well be that such an assessment was carried out decades ago. Unfortunately, this list is not systematically updated at the moment. Then you see here the estimated number of chemicals that are actually being enforced by member states across Europe in a systematic and regular way. That means there are around 100 chemicals um, that are regularly measured, but in some countries it will be well below this number. So compare these 8,000 or so chemicals that are intentionally used to make food packaging and other food contact articles in Europe with the number of 100 or less chemicals actually being controlled in the finished products that are on the European market. Yeah, there's quite a large gap here. Unfortunately, that's not all. 
Here you can see that there are even more chemicals that are potentially migrating into food. And this number, Dr. McCombie, estimates to be up to 100,000 different chemicals, many of which are essentially unknown. These are the NIAS. So this is, of course, a problem. And I ask myself if it isn't actually immoral to expose the, almost the entire human population to unknown man-made synthetic chemicals or chemicals that have not been properly assessed for their human health impacts. But what can be done about this? Well, the European Commission has announced that it will revise its food contact materials regulation and is currently in the process of doing so. And what is needed based on the scientific facts from my perspective is a detailed understanding of what chemicals are being used to make food content materials right now and an assessment of the actual levels migrating into food together with a science-based understanding about all of their key hazard properties. So this is of course a lot of work and maybe one first step would be to reduce the list of chemicals that are allowed for use in food contact. In addition, uh, we can also propose to remove the most hazardous chemicals that are found in food content materials. We've actually compiled uh, a list in a science-based systematic way. So this would be an actionable first step. And of course, removing the hazardous chemicals from food contact materials will also take care of mixture toxicity. And it will also, importantly, support the circular economy because materials can then be reused with much higher confidence. Or you could even compost food packaging because no synthetic man-made and known hazardous chemicals would be present that could transfer into the environment, for example, from biodegradable or compostable food contact articles. Composting is actually another area of concern for me due to the presence of hazardous chemicals in some bio-based food packaging. For example, the highly persistent class of PFAS, the per- and polyfluorinated alkyl substances, are found in 100% of molded fiber products that were recently studied in Europe. And these products are intended for composting. But is this a good idea? Well, when the material degrades, the highly persistent PFAS get into the environment. The PFAS do not degrade. So here, composting actually spreads hazardous chemicals into the environment. Therefore, having hazardous and especially persistent chemicals in biodegradable food packaging and foodware contributes to environmental pollution. That's not good. But there is some good news, namely that the EU's chemical strategy for sustainability addresses these and other types of chemical hazards. And now the challenge is to implement this ambition in both regulations uh, on packaging waste, but also on food content materials. And what's also good is that many food brands and retailers are now increasingly aware of the food packaging challenge. So I invite you to check out our free new resource on the Food Packaging Forms website, the Brand and Retailer Initiatives database that contains commitments about either reducing food packaging waste or the hazardous chemicals in food packaging, or ideally, of course, about both. And if you know of any uh, commitments that have been published but are currently not included in our database, please let me know, send us an email. Finally, stay tuned for more from the team at Food Packaging Forum. We're working hard on producing new and useful science-based tools around chemicals and food packaging and their impacts on human health and the environment. And I'm really, really looking forward to sharing some of these exciting new developments with you soon. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye for now.